In this video, we're doing an indefinite integral that requires a trig substitution. But to set up the trig substitution, we have to complete the square first. And to complicate matters, we have a minus sign issue right at the start. So we want to complete the square on this expression, 2x minus x squared. This is going to be easier to think about if we just get the factor of negative 1 out of there. And then think about how to complete the square on the expression x squared minus 2x. So the whole point of completing the square is to take care of all the variable pieces with a squared binomial. So I just asked myself, what binomial do I square to get x squared minus 2x plus some other stuff? And we'll deal with the other stuff later. And the binomial that I square to get x squared minus 2x plus some other stuff is x minus 1. And when I square x minus 1, it gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1. So the other stuff that I'm talking about here is that plus 1. So I can't simply replace x squared minus 2x with the square of x minus 1 because that's 1 larger than what I started with. So I compensate by subtracting 1. And now I can just go ahead and distribute my minus sign back into this expression and write the whole thing as 1 minus the quantity x minus 1 squared. So our original integral is actually the integral of the square root of 1 minus the quantity x minus 1 squared dx. And now I can see how to take advantage of a trig identity to simplify this. I have 1 minus a variable thing squared. Now I could let that variable thing be sine theta or cosine theta. Either way, I can take advantage of a Pythagorean trig identity to simplify the interior of the square root. And my preference is ordinarily to choose a sine function here because its derivative is simpler than the derivative of a cosine. But just for variety's sake, I'm going to choose a cosine this time. So I want that squared variable thing to just be a cosine. And then I get 1 minus cosine squared, which simplifies inside the square root. Don't forget to transform the differential. So on the left-hand side, I get a dx. And on the right-hand side, I get a negative sine theta d theta. And that minus sign is really the only downside to choosing a cosine for this substitution. But it's not a big deal. We can just move it out in front of the integral. And inside the square root, I get a 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then my differential was negative sine theta d theta, but I took care of the minus sign already. So 1 minus cosine squared simplifies to sine squared. And when I square root that, I get a sine out of it. So my integrand is now sine squared theta d theta. This is a classic situation that requires a trig identity. The square of the sine function is 1 half, and I'll just move that out in front, times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle. Well, each piece now has a guessable antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 is just theta. And then the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta, that's basically sine 2 theta, but to account for the chain rule, we also produce a factor of a half. So cleaning it up a little, I have 1 fourth. I'm just going to move the positive term in front. So 1 fourth sine 2 theta minus 1 half theta plus c. And we're not done yet because we had an x integral at the start of this problem. And I need to express my final antiderivative back in terms of x. So to do that, I need to solve for theta in my original substitution. And theta is the inverse cosine you could also say that the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. So when I sub this back in to my antiderivative, the first term is going to cause a problem because I have the sine of twice the angle whose cosine is x minus 1, and I need to simplify that into an algebraic form. That factor of 2 makes it so we can't really do this with a geometric construction. So to prepare, I'm going to use another trig identity and say sine 2 theta is 2 times the sine times the cosine and I'm going to cancel that factor of 2. So now I have 1 half the sine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1 times the cosine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1 minus 1 half theta, which again, it's the angle whose cosine is x minus 1 plus c. So that third term, the inverse cosine of x minus 1, that's done. That's fine. And then this piece that says the cosine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1, well, that's simple because the cosine and the inverse cosine undo each other. 
the one that's non-trivial is the sine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. And to simplify this, we use a quick geometric construction. We're going to visualize the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. And we already had a name for that. It's theta. So that's the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. And this is the simplest way to make that happen. The adjacent side is x minus 1, and the hypotenuse is 1. In order to get the sine of that, we've got to figure out the missing side here. So I apply the Pythagorean theorem. x minus 1 quantity squared plus question mark squared is 1. And quickly solving for the question mark, I subtract x minus 1 squared. I square root the result, and I get 1 minus the quantity x minus 1, all squared, which you should recognize from when we originally completed the square. It's really just a different way of saying the square root of 2x minus x squared. All right, so now I can find the sine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. That's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In other words, that question mark we just found over 1. To rewrite it as 2x minus x squared in that square root. And then I have the cosine of the angle whose cosine is x minus 1. Well, that's just x minus 1. And then 1 half inverse cosine x minus 1. And then plus c. And we're done with that one. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.